So here we're going to begin to talk about the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is actually a series of eight reactions. Uh, however, since this video is targeted for a general biology class in high school, uh, we're not going to memorize or even see the, the eight steps involved. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on the big picture of the Krebs cycle. So we just left off in the matrix of the mitochondria uh, forming acetyl-CoA. And so the Krebs cycle happens also in the matrix of the mitochondria. And we're going to start with taking that acetyl-CoA. Now, the coenzyme A is not uh, really used in the Krebs cycle. Instead, its role is kind of to act as like a helper almost to help the acetyl join into the Krebs cycle. Now, I should also mention that the Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle because here, the two carbon acetyl, in the very first step of the Krebs cycle, it attaches to a four carbon molecule forming a six carbon a molecule called citric acid or citrate. So if you ever see it called the citric acid cycle, that is why, and it's really the same thing. Okay, so when we had the acetyl, we had two carbons remaining from our, we had six carbons in glucose, and then in glycolysis, we got two three carbon pyruvates. Then we formed acetyl by releasing a carbon dioxide. So really, when we think about it, there's still potential energy in these bonds. There's still energy we can get from our food. Uh, and that's the purpose of the Krebs cycle, to get any remaining energy in the form of electrons. So here, uh, we take an electron carrier, NAD+. It's going to, um, during the chemical reaction, it's going to take electrons and a hydrogen. Uh, so we call this a reduced electron carrier. Technically, it would be NADH. And in that process, though, of breaking off, uh, carbon dioxide is released and the electrons are placed onto an electron carrier. Now, this is going to happen again. So another reaction occurs where we're going to break off a carbon dioxide and we're going to uh, gain some electrons and hydrogen. So if you were in a more advanced biology class, what just happened is um, you had an oxidation and reduction reaction. If you're in a ninth grade biology class, you probably don't have to know that. Uh, and so here, there is also one molecule of ATP produced, which isn't much. So the main purpose of the Krebs cycle is not to really make a ton of ATP. Rather, the purpose of the Krebs cycle is to get as many reduced electron carriers, to get as many electrons as possible um, from the Krebs cycle to carry them over to the electron transport chain. So here, when we talk about the Krebs cycle, this is all for one turn of the Krebs cycle um, from one acetyl-CoA. Technically, when you start with your six carbon glucose that's broken into two pyruvates, then the pyruvates break off a carbon dioxide and left with a two carbon acetyl. For each glucose, we have two acetyls. So for every glucose, you'll have two turns of the Krebs cycle. So for every glucose um, in the Krebs cycle, you should get eight electron carriers that are reduced or carrying electrons, two ATP, and then four carbon dioxides. So if we kind of summarize what we've seen so far with these uh, carbons, we started with our six carbons in glucose. Then during glycolysis, we ended with two three-carbon pyruvates. And then when we formed acetyl-CoA, we broke apart those three carbon pyruvates. The carbon dioxide, there's CoA, uh, the carbon dioxide was a waste product, a gas that was just released. And now we have two uh, carbon acetals that will go through the Krebs cycle. And then at the end of the Krebs cycle, we end up with six molecules of carbon dioxide. So at this point, at the end of the Krebs cycle, our food, our glucose, has been fully oxidized. It's been fully broken apart from uh, glucose into carbon dioxide. We've taken the electrons and the hydrogens to use in the electron transport chain. Good job.